Good morning, students. Today we are going to study the most important disease of swine that is known as classical swine fever. It is also known as hog cholera. And uh, students, uh, I want to tell you that this is an acute viral disease of swine species, and uh, <coughs> it is a highly contagious disease. But it also occurs in acute, subacute, chronic, and in apparent form. So uh, this uh, the virus, classical swine fever virus. It affects only the swine species, and uh, this uh, coming to etiology. It uh, the virus belongs to family Flaviviridae, and the genus Pestivirus. This genus comprises of apart from classical swine fever, bovine viral diarrhea, and border disease of sheep. All three are actually interrelated because they are antigenically related. So. If appropriate conditions are there, all three can produce intrauterine infection, and which will lead to persistent infection or uh, fetal abnormality. Coming to next is your host. As I have uh, told you earlier, this virus infects only swine species. So next is transmission. Transmission is mostly by direct contact, but as I have told you. It is also by vertical transmission is also known, and indirect contact is also uh, important in this disease. Mechanical transmission is also there. Coming to next is pathogenesis. Before pathogenesis, I want to tell you that the characteristically this virus is acute. This virus is causing acute disease with high mortality and morbidity. Mor morbidity may reach to 90 percent, uh, 100%, and mortality may reach to 90%. And within a 14 day of infection, animal may die, with uh, signs showing signs anorexia, depression, fever, and leukopenia. So, uh, if the animal survives more than 30 days, then the <coughs> then the infection may be categorized as persistent viral infection, and this persistent viral infection can be categorized again into two two categories. That is chronic. And late onset disease, late onset, uh, uh, late onset fever. In chronic, the disease starts as acute disease, but after some times, uh, the clinical complication subsides because of appearance of specific antibodies. But after some times, when immune system exhausted, then, <coughs> then. Uh, The secondary bacterial invasion takes place and uh, virus takes upper hand. Now the second category is, uh, as I told you, late onset CSF. Late uh, late onset CSF is uh, caused by persistently viremic, uh, persistently viremic immunotolerant CSF, which 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 has been infected, uh, intrauterine infection. So uh, the virus. <coughs> So the pigs, which are uh, in apparent, which are having in apparent viral infection, the signs are they they show signs of anorexia, depression, leukopenia, dehydra uh, dehydration, and dermatitis, posterior paresis, etc. Diarrhea, runting, etc. Coming to pathogenesis, basically virus affects three systems. That is immune system. Uh, <coughs> immune system number second is your endothelial system, uh, endothelial cells, and epithelial cells. When the virus affect endothelial cells, then uh, it causes damage, damage to the endothelium, and the thrombocytopenia takes place, and which will lead to conjunctional coagulopathy, in disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, and hemorrhages may result. Coming to uh, pathogenesis in proper, as you see, the virus uh, ta and takes entry by mucosal membrane, mucosal membrane, and then it uh, uh, primarily the replication of virus takes place in the tonsillar epithelium, and after replication, it goes to regional lymph node, and viremia takes place within 16 hour of infection. So rapid viremia takes place. And after this, as uh, as you know that this virus is having a specific affinity towards uh, 
uh, immune cells. So the virus uh, replicates in the lymph node, uh, in the bone marrow, Peyer's patches, uh, spleen, etc. And then after three to four days, the virus is disseminated and invaded in all the tissue, including your pharyngeal mucosa, gastrointestinal tract, and uh, gallbladder, pancreas, thyroid, uterus, etc. Coming to the signs, superficially the signs in uh, acute disease, the eyes are uh, adherent and uh, they are sticky. And uh, you can appreciate the hemorrhages, uh, erythema, irregular erythema in the ears or uh, hemorrhages, subcutaneous hemorrhages in the abdomen and in the inner aspect of the thigh. The carcass is dehydrated and terminal uh, diarrhea may be there. So these are the signs which are shown coming to the lesions. So these are the most peculiar lesion is a peripheral hemorrhage in the lymph node. You can very much appreciate the red halo in the lymph node which in chronic stage becomes slightly dirty brown in color because of degradation of hemoglobin. So this is a very peculiar and characteristic finding in this disease. And second one is kidney. In kidney, petechial hemorrhages are there and subcapsular petechial hemorrhages look like typical turkey egg appearance because in turkey you can find pinpoint spots. So the kidney looks like typical turkey egg kidney. So apart from kidney, splenic infarcts are there. The students, splenic infarcts are almost pathognomic in this disease and you can find most of the animals affected with this disease. And one thing I want to tell you that in splenic infarcts are there but there is a no splenomegaly which is a very common in other septicemic diseases. And apart from this, petechial hemorrhages are also noted in the urinary bladder, in the tonsils, in the larynx, in the GIT, in the lungs, and in epicardium. You can very much appreciate in some of the animals the sharply demarcated irregular areas of necrosis in tonsils or posterior facet. The students, the animals which are affected by this disease actually becomes anorexic before death. So the, the stomach is empty. When you, when you open the carcass, the stomach will be empty. And most characteristic finding in the intestine or GIT tract, you will find in the large intestine. In large intestine, the, mostly the cecum and colon are affected. In colon or cecum, you can find button ulcers, which are most characteristic finding of this disease. What are button ulcers? They are circular, well demarcated, sharply demarcated, erased border, saucer shaped circular area of necrosis. When necrosed tissue is put off, you can see the ulcer beneath the, uh, this button ulcer. So this is a button ulcer which is found in the large intestine, very characteristic of this disease. Apart from this, brain is also affected. In the brain, all the areas of brain are equally affected, but most of the affected areas are pons, medulla, midbrain, and thalamus. The, the lesions are mostly related to the vessels or supporting mesothelium. Eccentric cuffs are there because of migration of monocytes. Transmural migration of monocytes will lead to formation of eccentric cuffs. You can find mitotic figure and nuclear remnants uh, simultaneously because degeneration and proliferation takes place simultaneously. So you can find both mitotic figure and nuclear chromatin uh, of necrosed cell simultaneously. Apart from this, vascular lesions are also there Though vascular lesions are found in all the organs, but the vascular lesions are most prominent in lymph node, as I have told you earlier. 
Microscopic uh, infarcts are most prominent in lymph node and skin, but they are large enough only in spleen, tonsil, large intestine and gallbladder which you can see grossly. Otherwise it is a microscopic. So these are the lesions which you can find in this disease. So I can repeat one or two peculiar points which you have to remember that turkey a kidney appearance, number one, number two button ulcer, number three is uh, petechial hemorrhages and uh, uh, most important is lymph node uh, hemorrhages which is a peripheral only. Next one is uh, when, when the uh, intrauterine infection takes place, it will lead to abortion, stillbirth, mummification and various fetal abnormality take place because of uh, intrauterine infection. Coming to diagnosis, how will you diagnose this? Actually, the diagnosis is difficult because as I have told you that the virus, uh, classical swine fever virus shows antibody cross-reacting with bovine viral diarrhea. So th both antibodies to both disease cross-react. So for differentiating, you will, re you will have to need a specific viral neutralization test. So fluorescent antibody neutralization test, ELISA, and if you are having formalin fixed tissue, then semi nested PCR can be done for the di diagnosis. Differential diagnosis is concerned. So for differential diagnosis, you have to differentiate this disease from African swine fever and uh, various other disease of uh, some of the uh, diseases of swine. Uh, swine re reproductive and respiratory syndrome. So you have to differentiate uh, this disease from these. So this is all about uh, hog cholera or classical swine fever, which is the most important disease of swine. With this, uh, we have to end.